Okay, no so far. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, community's hustings. Um, it's a great pleasure to have our three panelists with us: um, Jane Hutt from Welsh Labour, Delith Jewell from Plaid Cymru, and Mark Isherwood from the Welsh Conservatives. And joining me, Chris Johns from Building Communities Trust, in chairing tonight's session is Ellen Howell from Comley Broke Um we, we've invited three parties here tonight following electoral commission guide, guidelines, and we've invited the three parties who are most likely to be forming the next Welsh government. Um, we'll be asking them in a, in a few moments to um, um, give opening statements about their policies on supporting communities. Um, and following that, we'll have a selection of questions uh, and looking to, uh, to go up to around, around seven o'clock. Just a bit of backdrop to the, the hustings tonight. Obviously, community action has been an important feature of life in Wales, going back to at least the Industrial Revolution. And indeed, Wales has been described in the past as a community of communities. And there are many, many community organisations working across the country. Indeed, the number of, of assets in community hands has risen significantly over the last decade, with activities now ranging from sports to arts to pubs and shops to youth work, environmental groups, um, green energy, tourism, and of course, emergency food support. Um, but uh, certainly in the past, there's been a sense of distance between government and communities and work that Building Communities Trust did in the six months up to lockdown showed a significant degree of um, a sense of not being appreciated or understood by community uh, on behalf of community organisations, feeling that government at all levels um, didn't really understand what they were doing, even though in many cases the goals were very similar. But the experience of COVID has changed a lot of that with communities and local government coming together to provide critical support to people facing hardship and isolation, aided a lot by Welsh Government funding. But the question this Hustings is looking to address is what comes next? There are many significant challenges ahead of us in moving out of the pandemic, and many of us feel community organisations have got a lot to um, contribute in, in, in that regard. And so to, not, to start tonight's Hustings, we're asking all the candidates with us tonight to address the question of how will your parties provide a supportive environment for communities across Wales in response to COVID and beyond. And I'd like to ask, ask Mark Isherwood from the Welsh Conservatives to speak first. Um, well, thank you and that's why that good evening uh, all. Your manifesto for healthier, happier, more resilient communities in Wales uh, begins, as you know, every community in Wales has the resources and influence it needs to build community capacity and develop and run its own social infrastructure. Um, I share your vision and have been saying so for years. For example, uh, I'm leading a Senate debate on public service delivery uh, eight years ago in 2013. I stated co-producing public services with users and communities is about delivery of better health, social services and other services to an aging population, to people facing illness and disability, to the economically inactive and to those living in social isolation. It's about prevention and reablement by personal and community responsibility and localism. It's also about sustainable social, economic, community regeneration. For example, speaking in the Senate in 2017, I stated strength-based development is about helping people in communities identify the strengths they already have in order to tackle the root problems, preventing them from reaching their potential. Applying this approach enables people and professionals to share power, will work together in equal relationships to make public services more effective and relevant. Your manifesto calls for a minister-led strategy for building stronger communities, which draws on the expertise of existing community organizations. The Welsh Conservatives would develop a long-term overarching community strategy to help empower local people and establish asset-based community development as a key principle within community development, empowering the people of the community and, and using existing community strengths to build sustainable communities for the future. A community-led cross-sector action group would be established and would provide recommendations to help inform this strategy. We would embed the principles of co-production in the design and delivery of local services in Wales to ensure that services are more responsive to the people's needs. We would establish a new duty within the Future Generations Act for public bodies to promote the role of community organisations 
and development of social infrastructure. We would consider introducing a new national well-being indicator, measuring community capacity and social infrastructure by local authority area to help identify areas that have insufficient social infrastructure. Having consulted the Building Communities Trust and the Co-Production Network for Wales, uh, I tabled um, an amendment during the passage of the Local Government and Election Wales Bill last autumn, based upon the Building Communities Trust report, Building Stronger Welsh Communities. As your report states, the disconnect between government, public bodies and communities is a barrier to community action, despite examples of cross-sector collaboration. People in Wales feel increasingly less able to influence decisions affecting their local area, you said. Many community groups welcome Welsh Government's policy ambition to involve them more, but there's a feeling that worthy words are not being backed up by action. Referring to the findings of over 250 conversations with people from grassroots community organisations across Wales, your report also states that groups still describe deficit models towards communities dominating government thinking, and that public bodies are doing to, not with, people and communities. They also describe entrenched public sector ways of working, characterised by poor communication, lack of trust, risk aversion, silo working, professional bias and staff demotivation as significant barriers to greater community action. Another of the amendments I tabled sought to ensure that local people and local community-based organisations are involved within the decision-making processes of the corporate joint committees now being established. As I said, this amendment seeks to ensure that the principles of co-production are fully embedded on the face of the bill to require corporate joint committees to actually deliver the involvement of local people and local community-based organisations. Regrettably, my amendments were defeated by the Welsh Government. Subsequently quoting your Building Stronger Welsh Communities report when questioning the local government minister in the Senedd, I said this is about harnessing the strengths and skills of local people so they can build the social infrastructure and shape the services they want and need in their area. Where your national conversation found that people in Wales feel increasingly less able to influence decisions affecting their local area, that worthy words are not being backed up by action, that public bodies are doing too, not with people and communities, and that entrenched public sector ways of working characterized by poor communication, lack of trust, and the other comments I made earlier are significant barriers to greater community action. The solution, of course, to this lies in your manifesto statement that if Welsh Government makes it a priority to listen to, trust and support communities, it would do much to secure a healthier, happier and more sustainable future for the people of Wales. I completely agree. Sorry, I was on mute myself. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, can I ask Jane to come in next? Thank, thanks very much, Chris. And can I, I, I just start by also thanking Building Communities Trust for all your inspiring work over the past few, few years and uh, with that, this all important focus on community action. Um, and I think this really, your, your experience is embedded in your manifesto, um, and it, which Welsh Labour values very much, uh, as, is lay, lay, as you lay out. And I start by saying that I came into politics because <laughs> of community action. I was a community worker in Pill, in Newport, and in the South Wales Valleys, and I was the first director of the Tenant Participation Advisory Service, because I've always believed in participatory democracy. Uh, it's not just about the ballot box, it's actually engaging our communities, particularly in terms of ensuring that we have social justice and to tackle uh, inequalities. So I think the development of community action from the 1970s onwards, which I've been very much embracing it, not only in terms of being an elected representative as a local government councillor, but then into the Senate, um, has been about participation in every aspect of people's lives. It is people's lives that are affected um, by political decisions, by governments, as you said, at every level. 
and, and we need to ensure um, that that participation is, is real, as is supported, and that we actually take action as a result of it. And that relates to housing environment, planning, health and well, well-being. Um, so I think there's so many examples, as you said, Chris, in Wales of how community solidarity um, has come together to make real change um, and address issues. But of course, the pandemic um, has brought out, I think, the strength of communities and turning community action into a way in which people have come out to help their neighbours and communities. I mean, obviously, we all know of the ways that's happened from more, more formal engagement, food delivery, support, friendship. But at the height of the pandemic, we had over 30,000 volunteers and many of those well, from our, uh, all of them were from our, our local communities. Some of them are people who've been furloughed, who've never volunteered before, but actually being steered and empowered by their involvement. And many are still operating, and I'm glad that the Welsh Government was able to uh, put £24 million pounds into the Third Sector Response Fund. And we also had an infrastructure in Wales with our community uh, voluntary councils, um, WCVA enabling uh, the support to go to the local groups, the local community groups. And I think that boost for charities and third sector organisations has been vitally important, but also getting money to the front line in terms of community facilities programme, community connectors. And I think very importantly, and I'm really pleased to meet Ellen, <laughs> because I think a new approach to the foundational economy, uh, which I think is the way, way forward in helping to make communities we live in stronger and more resilient. And I'm really interested in Cumni Bro, uh, Festinio, I've heard a lot about you. Um, and we need to move this approach away from economic development to one that's fo uh, focused on place. So just quickly for me, I think in terms of the way forward, um, we need to build back a fairer green and greener uh, Wales to tackle inequalities that have been so starkly exposed by the pandemic. And that has to start in communities and we need to use funding strategies and action plans to make this happen at a national local level. I believe the socio-economic duty which got through on the last day of the Senate and I think actually the support it was probably by Delhi and Mark is crucially important because every public body is going to have to look through the lens of socio-economic impact but also we've done a lot in terms of the race equality action plan to reach out to those who haven't been involved so much in terms of the community engagement. Um, and the fact we actually gave small grants to 50 community groups is crucial. I, I think also people want to engage with um, local nature, tackling climate change through new initiatives. And there's lots of act action groups setting up um, across, across our, all of our communities. And we need to make those links between health, well-being, uh, and strong uh, communities. So I would say all of our manifesto is relevant. Jobs and skills, the better jobs closer to home. Uh, program transport, working with Transport for Wales to promote opportunities, working, cycling, new social enterprise schemes like bike maintenance, repair cafes, bike recycling schemes, all in our manifesto. And also in the environment, creating new woodland, delivering also nature-based flood protection schemes, which I've been involved in in my constituency where devastating flooding that community kept coming together uh, but enhancing green places cooperative housing community-led initiatives community land tra um, trusts uh, so we will be putting communities first and it is about engaging with the people who we want to empower to guide us in in government um, and that's upskilling all of our uh, and supporting of our community organisers. So it's empowering and building stronger communities to create a fairer, greening and skilled Wales. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, can I turn to Delith now on behalf of, Pl of Plaid Cymru for the final opening statement? Diolch yn fawr i chi gydioch. Eich ymyneb hefyd ond i wedi cael fy nal fyny gyda hystings blaenorol felly diolch i bawb yn y gynulleidfa. Um, eich ymynedd hefyd am y ffaith oeddwn i ddechrau bach yn hwyr. Community is at the heart of the ethos of Plaid Cymru. I think there are lots of connections and links between the values of Plaid Cymru and those put forward in the BCT manifesto about empowering, the, that, that word that Jane just used at the end of her remarks, the empowering local people, building resilience, fostering greater 
well-being, the, the links between us and our environment, being able to overcome divides across whether it's generations or, or, or otherwise. Those are some things I think that have been brought into sharp relief by the pandemic, how important they are. And as we rebuild after COVID, I think that it's going to be even more important that we learn the lessons of the past year and that we don't lose all of the actually really innovative uh, developments that have come about in how communities have been able to be strengthened uh, in the darkest of times. There are lots of individual policies in the Applied Manifesto, which I'm sure will, will come up in, in the questions, but that really chime, I think, with uh, the manifesto commitments that have been put forward from linking school meal provision to local production to uh, inclusive decision making. So whether that's uh, creating new citizens assemblies or a, a rural Senate. But I think it, it is frustrating that these cornerstone projects that have the potential to really transform communities they yeah, they transform communities yes financially but also in terms of quality of life i think all too often they are seen as nice to have extras they're the first things to be cut when things are tough and i think that's quite darkly ironic when we consider how community projects actually tackle the root causes and the core of inequality of opportunities in our communities libraries closed down funding is for short and uh, horizons are lowered it doesn't have to be that way. I absolutely agree with Build, Building Communities Trust that someone in cabinet should have their role of ensuring community projects aren't marginalised, that local people should have greater rights over land, that we need a fundamental reassessment of how property and communal land actually are dealt with. I and I've got a few, just a quick couple of reflections on, on that specifically. I love living in the valleys because of the really strong community links that we have here. I lived in London for five and a half years and, and for all of London's uh, many attractions, actually this is the starkest difference is that when you walk down the street that people will talk to you um, and, and smile. The way in which our towns and villages in the valleys particularly were built came about because of particularly socio-economic factors that have had an impact on the urban design of our areas. Uh, the pressure, the need to build communities really quickly because of the mines uh, opening has meant that actually loads of housing is built up on top of one another almost. Uh, and that we, we are almost a melting pot in the Southern Valleys particularly because of people coming from communities across the UK uh, to us here, not just because of the mines, but the Italian families that opened up so many brachi cafes that enrich uh, our, our lives in the Valleys. Now, the, the way in which we've been intertwined and enriched together in, in this melting pot has continued since the mines closed and since we've had such a lack of investment in our areas for such a long time but something else about I suppose almost about the urban footprint uh, is worth remarking on with this and that is the faded grandeur of the too often closed down miners institutes libraries town halls chapels these cathedrals of community that were here at the beginning of the last century they've dwindled to a certain extent in their significance because over time I suppose people have maybe because there isn't that same sense of uh, a focal point for the community because of a lack of investment or time or care from, from governments, from the pressures of life. And there's so many, I think almost as a symbol of that, there are these crumbling chapels in the valleys. They've got the most imposing names from the Old Testament. So Zohar, Ebenezer, Moriah, Rehoboth. <laughs> Their shadows are imposing, but they're also this fantastic resource. They're sitting, waiting for care and for investment to be shown to them. In my area, lots of small local groups have taken over these chapels and the church halls, and they use them for yoga classes, for food banks, for all sorts of things. And that's inspiring. It's a way of forging almost a new covenant with the community in the old buildings. And what I'd end on is saying that community projects like this cannot ever be forced. That is their beauty they come about because of dedication of uh, passion of almost the indefatigability of local communities the least we can do is offer a national structure to shore up these networks longer term funding uh, to show them that, that then the respect that they deserve and an opportunity for them to flourish because if they flourish we all do 
It's great. Different about our deadlift. There's really uh, meaty stuff from all three of you there for um, everyone, to, everyone to get into. We're going to turn to the questions now, and um, Ellen is going to lead on those. Would you like to come with the first question, Ellen? Yes, no problem. Um, don't go in a question and come right. So I'm going to ask a question in Welsh. So just in case anyone's missed it, there is an um, interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. And if you press that and select English, then you will hear me speaking in English or Neris rather speaking on my behalf in English. Um, okay. But your question can ask any Hanamad and Robert and um we see gown any often at the um and we never can see the with a COVID uh a matter of an hickle city board gun and community. Sister Bodochin Gwesher with an ass why strong community hail, group care community all our sector go how this can be the land that parry was an eighth hail, a chemnocky, a knapple skillia, who bought that leal, a froviata, pobble so, since I can person as wife from Cuminetta, one farms are short dress, a craze for Sira and I short dress, a she cloak, shies Cuminetta and wife. Yo, Helen. Jane, can I ask you to come in first on this one? Thank you very much. I mean, this is something where, you know, I mentioned I, I was a councillor for 12 years in Riverside in Cardiff, and actually I wrote a little book. I was working for Women's Aid, I wrote a book called opening the town hall door because there's such a divide between you know elected councillors and, and officers of the council and communities and I mean I'm talking about a long time ago now but unfortunately there has been this sort of barriers between uh, often uh, and it has been a problem in Wales between elected representatives sometimes in the and the communities but it's changing um, and I think the pandemic has had a real impact on this so that uh, local authorities have seen the values of the, their local council's voluntary action. You've all got them in all your uh, constituency areas. Um, they've been working much more closely together strategically to meet the needs, uh, respond to uh, volunteers coming forward um, with things like um, the food delivery, breaking down barriers and isolation, befriending projects. And my talk to local government uh, leaders, elected representatives, is that they see the strength of communities and uh, and also volunteers and the voluntary sector very clearly. Um, it's sort of live. It's been living through this pandemic, so I don't think things are going to go back. It's very similar to actually um, the relationships because we meet as ministers. We meet with the local go um, government leaders. We meet uh, regularly also um, with police, for example, we, uh, as well as the third sector. And it's been good that we've been able to do that with party leaders as well, both um, Conservative and Clyde Cymru and, and Mark Drakeford, to see how we can work together. Um, but there are liaison committees. I think probably all of you know that each county um, has got a, a liaison committee. And it's not just health. It's, it's, it's not just local government. It's health as well. I think public service boards are really important. And the third sector is playing an increasingly important role in, in the um, public service boards. But I also think that our voluntary sector, uh, all over Wales, you've just got different strengths. We haven't got Cymru Bro Fastiniog in every <laughs> community in Wales. Uh, we've got models like you, um, and particularly in the valleys, as Della has said, but also in communities uh, like I represent in, uh, in the Vale of Glamorgan. Um, and we're just going to have to make sure that this is now, that we don't go back, that actually local government, health service, um, and indeed, you know, all of the public bodies can benefit from listening and working with their communities. The, the CVCs are really important, and also the, the, uh, the mentor bros, um, that for helping with things like constitutions and governance and helping skill up to running committees, etc., because you still need to be ensure you have that kind of representative basis as well even in communities. But I'm sure Building Communities First will be helping with all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, Delith, can I turn to you next? Dear Chris, the medal, I mean, Pip, or Ran Suadra Leol, the medal, Dross of Ruth and Dreth, I didn't get with the Dusky. Pamor Boisig, a detail of Drathy under level, Lord Glad, a dinner, Cassia, a gossa, she's gone, Bobble, and a bewitted DDD, 
gyda llywodraethiant a fi meddwl mae angen i ni neu popeth yn ei gallu grifhau y perthynas yna rhwng pobl a, a system, y systemau democratau yn gyffredinol. Byddwn ni yn uh, ar lefel macro felly, byddwn ni'n neud i ffwrdd ar ran barth y cynllunio, ar uh, corporate joint committees, fydd yn mynd cofio beth ydy hynna uh, yn gyfraid nawr, byddwn ni'n dod mewn ar ran barth y uh, newydd fydd yn ffocysu ar gallu uh, rani cyfoeth ym mhob ystyr y gair cyfoeth, bron nid ne, jyst yn ariannol, ond hefyd o ran uh, cysylltiadau democrataidd ar, ar draws Cymru. Byddwn ni'n diwygio cynghorau cymunedol uh, i eto'r mwyn cryfhau democratiaeth ar lefel nawr glad. Fi'n meddwl, mae'n rhaid i ni edrych ar lle dysgu o'r pandemig, edrych ar cymaint o ddaioni oedd yn dod mas o allu crefhau, uh, fi'n ceisio cyfieithu hyn yn fy mhen tra fi'n siarad, uh, um, ceisio cyfie, uh, uh, traws newid fel ma uh, cysylltiadau gyda byd i producers, fel local produce, um, <laughs> cynnyrch, diolch, cynnyrch leol, uh, a, a edrych ar fel dyn ni'n gallu uh, creu co-optibs pe, pedd y fel yna, a fydd yn siŵr sut i ddweud yn, yn, yn gyfraig ar y diwedd, ond fydd yn ni'n gallu dysgu o symudiadau y bron fel cymru Brof Ystuniog a, a Community Movement Cymru er mwyn edrych ar sut ni'n gallu crefhau'r cysylltiadau lleol, 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 ond gweld power sy'n genedlaethol byddwn ni'n gallu dysgu o'r rheini, felly fi'n meddwl mae fe'n gysylltiad dyst dim un one size fits all ateb y mynd i um, ateb cwestiwn sydd o'i reidrwydd a mae'n gorf y bod yn rhywbeth holl gynhwysiol, ond fi'n meddwl mae'n rhaid i ni wneud yn siŵr, gyda phobl, fydd eisiau ar gyda Chris am hyn o'r blaen, fi'n meddwl mae potensiol gyda ni ar hyn o bryd i dob mewn a newidiadau radical, ie yeah, yn y ffordd dyn ni'n byw bywyd, ond hefyd yn y ffordd mae systemau democratiaid yn gweithio, gosh, byddwn fe, na fyddwn fe'n dda i allu crefhaus cysyniad o um, atebolrwydd, Ond mewn ffordd da, mae ma atebolrwydd yn ail weithio ydyn ni'n clywed, mewn ffordd negyddol, mae atebolrwydd yn gallu bod yn rhywbeth rhydd i da ar gyfer y gymuned, ond dylst ni ddim cymryd yn ganiatal, bydd unrhyw newidiadau yn digwydd, ond i bai bod ni yn brwydr amdano nhw, a bod ni actually yn dysgu'r gwers i achos, mae yna diedd mewn cymdeithas i bobeth fy nôl i fel oedd o'r blaen. Diolch yn fawr, Delith. Um... Certainly recognize some of the complexities you're talking about there, which uh, rec uh, reflect some of the work that a lot of community organizations face on the ground. Mark, do you want to come in now? Thank you, yes. Um, I think at, at HARP, um, we need to take a, a proactive rather than reactive approach to not only supporting the social infrastructure that exists, uh, including the new social infrastructure that's arisen during the COVID crisis, but also. Uh, supporting communities to develop social infrastructure where there's insufficient social infrastructure in place. Some of that will need direct government leadership. And I mentioned establishing a new duty in the Future Generations Act to promote the role of community organizations um, or for public bodies to promote uh, the role of community organizations and development of social infrastructure. I talked about we need to, government needing to develop a long-term overarching community strategy. So we Power local people and establish asset based community development um, and genuinely involve uh, local people, local communities in the design and delivery uh, of local services. Like all of us, I've seen great examples of this, um, but I've also seen horrible errors where opportunities were missed. Um, one example I'm, I'm the patron of a, uh, a disability charity which was established by. Uh, or a user-led disability charity established some decades ago, uh, run by and for disabled people in the community, and uh, the local authority decommissioned its services and uh, procured services from outside. To me, that's ludicrous. Uh, the social capital established by that network um, was effectively lost to the, the new body that was uh, brought in. Um, I've worked with organizations trying to set up or setting up a, a, a co-productive community organization uh, campaigning on changing places, toilet you know, access. Um, I've seen a successful establishment working with a GP practice 
uh, and the former director of co-production Wales in Flintshire to establish a user-led fibromyalgia support group. Um, Wrexham, we saw the establishment of the community hub initially to support uh, homeless people on the streets of Wrexham, which developed into so much more. And that took uh, community entrepreneurs to come up with the idea and make it happen. But, but not every community has necessarily those entrepreneurs within them. So it take, needs government at national and local level uh, to take that leadership and establish the open, uh, local in, uh, social infrastructure. Um, and I'm fed up of hearing certain people, I call them the little Napoleons, is my term for it, uh, in power with salaries and fancy titles, um, saying, oh, it doesn't work, you know, if you involve the people, they never agree with each other, and you end up wasting a lot of time and resource rather than just getting on with traditional methods of service delivery. No, they're doing it wrong. The organisations like you specialise in engagement with communities, empowerment, enablement of communities to build that resilience. So you can then bring in the community organisations. You can then unlock the strength and assets of the community, which grow ground up. Um, so ultimately, it's about properly turning around that top-down thing, um, reversing the power ratio, and genuinely developing social capital from the bottom up. Thank you very much, Mark. Ellen, do, um, do you want to come in? Yes, I can come in with the next question. So it's really good to hear your answers, dear Hamatab. My name is Lopoda, one of the Apkasahikia, the report, trust one of the two thousand community at Huatra. Gan aml da ni'n ffeindio fan hawdd i adnabod um, pwyntiau cyswllt unigolion hefo um, Llywodraeth Leol neu um, Llywodraeth Cymru, ond mae'n bwysig bod ni erbyn hyn yn meddwl sydd da ni yn datblygu ac yn cryfhau y pwyntiau cyswllt rhwng grwpiau cymunedol a cymunedau fel unedau i hunan a Llywodraeth. So, mae'n braf chwyd ychyd atebion chi, a mae'n gallu anhaol iawn bod ni'n gallu symud ymlaen o'r cyfnod yma i gyfnod nesaf. Um, Ma um, a question this I said gonna uh, and so on and then I know he well played ya um ruin mo e gamnoki um the thuries in try how the acrava he gamineta the only put less less I know what Berchen are dear a cadilata cohoides. Okay, um Dennis, can I ask you to come to this one first? Yeah, and sicker. Uh, yeah, but then we met up. Ma, I'm moving again. Resum, but then we in Valchion or I'm really my nature. I mean, Peter fell in the trade and a girl a girl at all. In the trade we met up. Ma, and a camoid. Uh, I think my hen and we are giver. Let me try to come here. I'm looking at probably my most genuine deep with and a camoid. Ma, my then, my then resource. See the Anna and Wag, I've been brought the medal, and a Rubeth and Rev of in Timlock, but seen they've been dressed or swing weld. Add Adelada, I can see the Macaulay of Nadia Moya, a has a potential. See the good to know. They hit my tear. See the Macaul, a see the Vasta would demand. See the Macaul, a where Faragi can a community or herald in the Macabod for Dana, and a Vasta did your um Vasta did your pathways. Um, the Mangleer Vasa Bada Angen, uh, Newid, uh, uh, Adob Mauna Rights of Way, Newid, Erebut Vel Navesi, and Revol and Sicker, but the V, Oblied, up at the Nivel Plied, Hevid, Oblied, Nathan and House Achos, Enor Peth and Moya Vimadal, Deniwidi, when I'm on a thy bit, Nidi Desky Lot, uh, and I saw a pandemic, see them birth now, your question, Emma. Ian, Eddie Pamor, Boisig, a dear. A di bywyd naturiol, a di'r tir i ni fi meddwl. And then wedi gynnau lockdown gynta, pan oedd gynnau ni'r tywydd hyfryd yma, y, 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 a os oedd gan rhywun gardd, oedd lockdown lot haws ar y cyfan, nag os oedd dim gardd gan y person yna, ac os oedd rhywun yn byw yn agos at parc neu at y mynyddoedd, ar gyfer iechyd meddwl oedd y cymaint yn well. A dylsa, dylsa, dylsa ni fod wneud yn siŵr fod Pob tŷ newydd yn cael ei adeiladu gyda, uh, sydd yn ymhellach i ffwrdd na chwarter awr gerdd, neu fyddai fel na oddi o'r tîr gwyrdd hefyd glas, ond, so, ond dyw hyn ddim just yn bwysig ar gyfer unedau teuluol unigol, fi meddwl mae hyn yn rhywbeth wedi bwysig ar gyfer y gymuned, a dyna pham o ran um, 
reappropriate it at a nice tier, nay at a lad, I see the noag. Gedelch in a need in a house, needy for the bureaucracy, need in a house in a doors are a no moun irim ak i avalagaminad. I was bath in a bead at your point or just call Adelada wags it just a mindy the ruia, just am said. I mean, did he get in Guada, Austin, them and age Rubeth now did with Sodir Arian and an Adelada in a. Manu just a minute, they'll bell the ring dragon says, they'll go to rack and ruin. A Kamaint or Shom a hothead for the Hana in a gate. Mark, can you come in next on this one? Sorry, was it Mark or me? Mark, Mark. I guess. Mark. Sorry, oh, yes. The answer to the question is absolutely yes. Um, and I think of some of my casework at the moment, I can think of, uh, I won't name the county, a county not far from where I'm sitting at the moment, uh, not the one I'm actually in, but nearby, um, where there's some wonderful community assets that the council is insisting on selling by auction, despite in each case, community groups, established community groups with community support, uh, putting in realistic bids uh, to acquire them. We know that already in law, even under the previous EU law, which is currently into our own law, um, uh, community benefit clauses were included, which enabled public assets to be transferred to community groups at zero or sub-market prices. Um, now, we, the Welsh Government did introduce, I'm sure Jane will mention this, its community asset uh, transfer policy, but they could have gone a lot further and we would do so. Um, whether that needs new legislation or whether it means uh, bringing forward the powers delegated to Welsh ministers under the 2011 Localism Act, which as in England would establish a community asset register, which would give commu uh, put any uh, community uh, asset onto uh, that register and would give communities basically the first bite uh, if that property became available. Um, uh, I think they'd have up to, if I remember the English legislation, for six months put forward a, a, a proposal to take on and run that as a community asset. Uh, in Wales, we do not have that community asset model. I'm not necessarily suggesting we would do it exactly the same way as England, but uh, as, a, as a holding point, we could uh, introduce the Localism Act measures which are already available to Welsh ministers and then look how we could take that further uh, with Welsh legislation. Thank you very much Mark. And Jane, can I ask you to come in last on this one? I, thank you very much and yes I was going to mention community transfer, <laughs> uh, um, asset tra community asset transfer Mark. Um, and uh, actually I think probably all of us as elected representatives as Senate members will know of those transfers that have taken place in our communities and constituencies. Um, and I, th I, th I think in terms of my, my, my knowledge just locally, the community asset transfers have been very successful. And, and obviously if we need to strengthen the, the, anything like that kind of move, which we're very supportive of uh, in the Welsh Labour government uh, in terms of community tra asset transfer, um, then we need to look not just in terms of statutory uh, basis if that's needed, but also funding issues as well, because I think one of the problems has, be, has been that some community transfer assets, uh, community asset transfers haven't actually, there hasn't been the funding available to help uh, perhaps a new social enterprise or existing organisation embrace those new opportunities. That certainly I think happened with some of the libraries that have been transferred um, in Wales, and some of those libraries had to transfer because of funding cuts, I have to say, um, that were coming through to local government and they transferred into local uh, communities and, and charities, which have been um, very successful, but been quite tough for those groups um, without uh, financial support. So we're we've been expanding the Communities Facilities Programme, which is that great money where you go straight into to buildings, which we do need, um, and that, that, that's been very important, particularly over the, the last year. Uh, but also, I mean, I think the issues around what do we mean by community asset transfer is, is also about land, uh, as, as Delith has said, uh, and the fact that we want to enable that uh, community land trust opportunities to develop. I mean, our manifesto, we've got, for example, we want to create a thousand community food growing sites 200 community orchards, um, tiny forest habit creation schemes that rel 
pathway stations. There's lots and lots of stuff there on the, on the green uh, agenda, uh, but also sensory gardens. Now that's where you link up with both uh, health and well-being, uh, health charities and the Welsh NHS. And I think sensory gardens is regarded as a real um, opportunity in local communities as well. So we just always need to look, do we need a law here? We don't always need uh, new laws, but if we need them, we have to look at that. But we certainly need uh, funding opportunities to, um, to, imbe to embed and support uh, those groups and organisations that are, are setting up. It's very interesting just looking at how many of our social enterprises and, of course, um, you know, Cumney, uh, Blind and Fist, New York Cumney is just such a, an example where you have generated income. Um, and that's what, of course, social enterprises can do if they're given the right backing. And that, of course, links back to the foundational economy as well. But I think there's real opportunities now in terms of town centre developments, which we, we're talking about, uh, as well in terms of transforming towns. Uh, and, and also making sure that this is all linked up to a Wales community food strategy, um, which of course, uh, and the cooperative centre, which of course is where uh, communities are ready and willing and want to engage. Thank you, Jane. As everyone may have noticed, my co-chair, Ellen Howell, has dropped out of the meeting uh, due to technical problems. I'm hoping we'll get her back. But in her absence, I'm going to have to ask the questions which are based on those we've had sent through uh, um, over the last couple of weeks as we've been registering people. I'm going to try and cram in three more questions. I'll be ambitious. So I'm going to have to ask panellists to be a bit briefer. Uh, at least one of them is a yes or no question. Um, so that hopefully should allow you to be brief. One, one question, follow, um, which, which well, at least one of you has touched on already, though. If we look at the situation in both the Republic of Ireland and in Scotland, uh, the governments there have strategies for um, prom promoting uh, commu community activity um, and maximising their contribution to wider public policy. Should Wales have a similar strategy? Um, Mark, could I come to you first? Well, yes, I think in my, again, I, in my opening comments, I said that we would introduce a, um, a long-term overarching community strategy, which would embed uh, exactly that and much more uh, within it, but it would be done with not two or four communities, um, with a community-led um, action group to provide the recommendations that would inform and then evaluate and monitor that strategy. So again, it would have to be done with not two or four. Right, thank you, Mark. Um, Jane, could you come on next? Yes, I, I think it goes back to what I said at the beginning as well about the fact that, you know, if we're going to build strong communities, this is not just about having, it's a bit like equalities, a communities minister or a communities directorate or a communities mission. It's got to be the whole of Welsh government has got to be influenced by these values and objectives. It, it, it has to be embedded in, in Welsh government and then hopefully through to all of other public bodies as well, but a, a community's first approach, and of course we've been there, haven't we, um, is crucially important if we're going to achieve a greener, fairer Wales. Thank you. Uh, and Olola, Delia? Yeah, Chris and Olola, Ellen, Hefyd. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, and I, and Sekir, and Katina, Fimadol, Ma, well, being Katina, get a bit of market with Hefyd, but of Jane and Kefford are here, and right, my friend Boisig, I gael straighter, uh, and for them and Rubeth in a mend and top down, Maridi Hen Borden Rubeth in Dord or um or Laur Glad, uh, and a pair of Mang and a Strether, or my heavy dangin, or Arian, or Pizodiad, uh, in Aden Shore, Vords, uh, Niangathi, and Bueri Caminetta. Brilliant, great. Dear uh, Mauer. Um, Ellen, do you want to do you want to have a question, Nessa? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, right, uh, questions can any uh, um, uh, a day? Um, I don't think I'll see snack because I'll see snack online and you're actually within a back in house. Um, how would you ensure local people and communities are more involved in the decisions that affect their lives? 
And do you think local community organisations have a role to play in this? So then I just had them down here and put it back and bar out the medal. Um, and um, basically, I deserve that burn at the um, bed of Strasira Penotal was a chine, the sicker high or the ice a community and Cali Pulat and how on the short drive Gumri about getting no glaze the short drive and in Yamgurhal. Which my Natalati, the Bach, as to the Dal, do other questions with that. My Natalati, I found them on far ever at the Ninitahar, um, at the Ninitahar, um, when Nita Penatol is Gaminetta and Abitia. Do you go ahead, Chris, to the Nita Mount and the Shang Hoy? Yeah, we definitely travelled on that. Yeah. Jane, would you be able to come out on first on this one? Sorry, Jane. Oh, sorry. sorry well, yes, on this one? In terms of st sort of structural engagement, I mean, it's interesting. I mentioned tenant participation advisory service. Actually, what happened? That was about the sort of duty of the social housing, uh, social landlords to engage with their tenants um, to improve housing management, which included their neighbourhoods, estates, and communities. And it's been very effective. And of course, what's happened as a result of that is the many tenants and residents groups. Uh, in our in social housing are interested not just in housing management but in everything else that affects their lives like whether they've got a play area uh, you know the other council um, services as well uh, the environment uh, so it, it, it is helpful to have a formal liaison structure to enable so you, you, you don't have to ask you're actually engaged um, already uh, in that those kinds of decision making I think that the third sector itself has to look at its own governance and its own representation because there's a lot of opportunities for the third sector to influence Welsh government through the third sector partnership council liaison committees at local level with local government, public service boards. But of course, you know, those are more formal third sector voluntary organisations. We want to reach down to our community engagement and social uh, um, enterprises. So I think that that's something which we need to look at in terms of uh, at a very local level, how can we get, um, and of course you've got good models, how can we get that influence so that it is not knocking on the door, it's actually about participation and having a right to be there and a right to influence policy. Thank you very much, Jane. Delith. Last point that Jane was making is really powerful actually about people feeling that they have a right and that they deserve to be there so they are formal things that, that i think that we need to do so i think we need but they're also less formal so the formal uh, main um, impetus i think that we'd need to have here would be creating more citizens assemblies and i talked earlier about a rural senate and, and i think that, that same model could maybe be looked at for other groups that um it would that it would make most thematic sense um for, for you know for different demographics. Uh, I think that we need to maybe find ways of, uh, Chris knows I'm very passionate about finding ways of creating uh, links between generations so that uh, we overcome generational divides, uh, that we make sure that there are ways in which people who are maybe digitally excluded can be more engaged in decision-making because um, one of the changes that we've seen come about because of COVID is that more and more things are in lots of ways more accessible because we're being able to have these meetings online, but actually for the people who are not able to connect digitally, they get the dangers, they'll get further and further left behind. So we need to make sure that, that it's inclusive in that way. But I think more fundamentally and more long term, we need to have we need to think about what we can do to rebuild people's the, rebuild the contract of trust between politics as an idea and communities or, or, or people, because I think that the idea of politics can seem very remote to people. And I think that that needs to start with the education system and, and we need to take advantage of the new curriculum to do this, to foster a sense of what democracy can do um, for communities, that actually politics is everything that affects our day-to-day -day lives. I don't think there's an easy answer to this. I think that it involves, yes, the education system. I think that things like citizens' assemblies will help, but the, but the danger with things like citizens' assemblies on their own is that it's self-selecting people who are already democratically engaged and have the time, have that precious resource of time to be able to do that. We need to find ways of engaging more with people who, because of stresses of work, 
because of a whole stew of complicated factors would not be would not put themselves forward to be involved in community projects, to be involved in citizens' assemblies. We need to find ways of renewing people's trust in the sense of community and the sense of politics. It starts with education, but I think it's a lot more complicated than that. Thank you very much, Dalit. Um, Ellen, you have to ask me. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, I'll try and be quick. Uh, sorry, but we need hard action to drive real change. Um, in the, the lots of legislations in place as reference to many of these things and things like the Social Services and Wellbeing Act and the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, but we still receive reports such as the one you produced, uh, but that's been endorsed by reports from Joseph Roundtree and uh, Carnegie and Bevan Foundation and um, WCVA and many more. Um, so we have to work with you to, uh, to drive that change. Yes, that needs a new duty in the Future Generations Act, uh, on public bodies. I'm sick of hearing the little Napoleons um, dismiss dismissively and stutely uh, putting this down um, in private at least. Uh, we need an overarching community strategy. We need uh, a cross-sector action group, community-led. Uh, we must monitor and evaluate we're going to have a duty, not to punish or criticise, but to support, to ensure better understanding of what this actually means and how it can be achieved and how working with organizations like yours, uh, as, as we've heard in uh, San can actually begin to drive that change uh, that we all need. Uh, housing was mentioned. Um, most people will be aware that the Welsh housing quality standard to get all social housing uh, up to uh, a quality housing standard. Um, the uh, RSA, the, the housing associations that say, on average, we're a lot quicker getting there uh, than uh, most local authorities, or some local authorities, but even more, the uh, Charter Institute of Housing produced uh, a support, an additional layer, the Welsh Housing Quality Standard 2, uh, which was about community engagement, community empowerment, community ownership, unlocking the assets in communities. And I've seen some great projects in RSLs, uh, and most RSLs have done some of this work, some brilliantly, but very few councils have actually fully uh, embraced it. We need that duty to drive uh, that change. And the final example I'll give, again, in the COVID context, and Jane will remember this, uh, at the beginning of COVID, third sector bodies, community organisations were desperately concerned, I was getting contacted by large numbers of them, that they were having to change the way they were working to meet increased demand for support in a different way, mainly online, but their fundraising was falling through the floor and nobody seemed to be doing anything about it. Eventually, on the base, basis of the Barnet money, Barnet consequentials the Welsh Government received because of the UK Government spending announcements on COVID, Jane did announce a funding for the third sector and she was very generous. She, she briefed me on this and others, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but we should have been proactively, automatically involving that in the design of the uh, response to COVID from the beginning and not as an afterthought. Uh, similarly, as, as Jane will recall, we were contacted by charities like Tide Dog, who were saying the response to redesigning uh, our, our streets and community areas, social distancing, in many cases had ignored the voice of the disabled community and we were creating barriers, we were isolating them and we were generating hate crime uh, from people who were not impressed that, for example, people who were blind or had partial sighted couldn't follow the, uh, the social distance rules. So again, we should automatically be involving community organisations and third sector at the beginning in the design and the funding. Because finally, WCA pointed out in evidence to the Becomes uh, Communities Committee when I was sitting on it, I think Dallas was on that at the same time, and to Finance Committee, which I was subsequently on, that the extra COVID money uh, the sector received was a drop in the ocean compared to the over billion pounds lost in their charitable fundraising income. And yet the amount they were able to save the statutory sector in emergency services was many multiples of that. Yeah. So why weren't we designing and delivering those services with them from the outset, not as a cost, but as an investment which would reduce pressure and spending on the statutory sector? Thank you, Mark. 
Sorry, we, we, we're, we're overrunning time. We're going to just squeeze in two very short questions now, uh, one, of, one of which is the promised yes or no one. Um, Ellen, did you want to come in with your final yes, question? Um, I, I just wanted to say just very, very quickly, just before I go to my last question, it's Mandili Kalanokol Kluat um Higid and Sharadanglina um Atilati Persanas Kamnoki Kamineta Gahioki Kamineta and on the Sharad O Savpoint Kamineto um in an Petha Sinan and Haro e Pantwin Kara Klua the Gay Renand or Ganli Dithion at the at the Hin Silwedoli but a Kavrivolt Vehi Yachyokini Iluiza and Gora Diskin have a chi at them have a a herald man hernad buisig in e, vel caminetta boninga hikarium line, ag mar risk of vetians in e, vel caminetta, and shower, 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 yaw mui, na etio ichi vel lotrais, nevel elota or senet, um, a kind of line. But he, my more brave clue at Gaia, um, again, again, he gait, um, I think it's in I have a lot of them, a shower and a hint aid. And the Nadi the Impetus and in Gavin at the Hinsel was only a risk, my Caminetta, and got a gumrid and moon engage or have a heave of your thighs and that. And yeah, I'm lining, I'm lining question. I don't think I'm a sister, I get a husband and sister, I'm lining. Um, I'm a Kavitha, I'm a priest, I'm a priest. Okay, so will you commit to establishing a community wealth fund for Wales that provides more long term flexible funding to communities? So, it, you know, this is looking at long term funding, something that's really lacking for communities at the moment. Yes. And something that's been re-endorsed strongly in the chat, if you've got a chance to look at it. Yes. Um, Delith, can I come to you first? I'll be really brief because I know that we're very short on time. Yes, absolutely. One of the um, I know that one of the biggest frustrations and I mean frustrations in its literal sense that it frustrates progress is that for so many community projects for so many that, that do so really vitally important work that because funding cycles are so short that you just have to be worrying constantly about getting more money to just keep topping things up which means you can't one thing you can't plan far enough into the future to be as innovative as you might be and to be as creative as you might be but also if you're always worrying about things then you i don't know then that just clouds things for you does not it that you can't actually innovate and flourish as much as you would so yes absolutely I would completely agree with that. Thank you very much. Mark. Um, yes, I'm, our manifesto reads or not won't be published until tomorrow. And I don't know exactly what it'll be in. I know it'll be a very condensed uh, manifesto. I won't have all the uh, detail, but certainly when I submitted the far more detailed version to the people drafting it, uh, that was very definitely in there. And it's uh, something I've supported for a long time. That's great, thank you. And finally, Jane. Yes, well, I mean, there's been a code of practice for funding for many years, so the difficulty is getting that to actually work. So it's not just one off one year funding. Uh, and that often depends on whether we're getting a, a settlement from, from London, I have to say, from, the, from Westminster, when we don't have a settlements um, when we're expecting, and of course, austerity and the pandemic have made it very difficult to get that surety. But we've done some good work um, with the Third Sector Partnership Council on this, um, and, and Mark and Adelith will know that that's something we've, we've debated in terms of the committee work on the impact of, of the pandemic on the third sector. But we need to make sure that that reaches out to communities. It's not just the third sector, it's actually reaching down to communities. So certainly this, um, I think this hosting has been really helpful in focusing what the key priorities are going to be when hopefully we, we get into government, <laughs> get back into government. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. What I would say, I suppose, is, is the BCT manifest does suggest ways of funding that which don't rely on government funding um, and therefore not dependent on year by year uh, yeah. cycles from, from Westminster. So that's something we'd be very happy to discuss with the next government. My final question, which is a yes or no question, one of well, at least one of you has mentioned Community Movement Cymru, which is an emerging organisation at the moment, uh, well over 100 community organisations, but there are many more who still we, we still wish to engage in the conversation are coming together to create that community voice. Uh, and my question is uh, to all of you, starting with Mark, is if you are 
elected to government, will you commit to meeting Community Movement Cymru to build a relationship between grassroots organisations and, and the next Welsh Government? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Jane? Yes, definitely. And Deli? An emphatic yes. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Very, uh, can I just thank everyone for staying with staying with this, both the um, the, the audience and especially our, our three panelists. What's been notable, I think, today has been the. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you three to decide whether you'd agree with each other or not. Um, but it has been a degree of enthusiasm and support for community-based work that you've all expressed, and you've all obviously got quite a lot of experience as, as well. Um, as I've said to Delif, and I've certainly said to colleagues of Jane's as well, the frustration for many community organisations is the, I suppose, seeing that practical support and enthusiasm from politicians of all stripes, but not necessarily seeing the policies that follow it through. Um, so that's one of the things we'd really like to see in the next uh, Welsh, Welsh Parliament, is moving from practical support, which can be isolated and, 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 and occasionally ad hoc, to a more systematic policy, policy approach, because we're clearly all agreed on the importance of all of this. And now we've got to make more of it happen as we, as we build out of COVID. Thank you very much, very much, very much for everyone um, tonight. Diochan Bauer, Nostar, um, I'm not sure if enjoy the rest of the elec election well, campaign is the right thing to say, but um, I'm sure it'll be very, very interesting as, 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 we, go, as we go on. Thank you very much, Nostar, everyone. Good night. <clears throat>